What's up, guys? I'm your host, Steven, hashtag 40 Acre Addicts. Like always, smash that subscribe button, get us to a thousand subscribers, and one of you out there can win Jacoby Jones' game day glove. I am joined today by my co host, Robert. Say, hook em. Hook em. What's going on, guys? Like always, today we're going to dive into next week's game. It is week four. We are getting into conference play, and we are playing no other than Texas Tech. And man, they are not a joke. Yeah. I mean, they had they had some troubles with FIU last week, but uh, the uh, stats don't lie. Yeah, stats, stats don't, don't lie, lie at all. And we'll, you know, uh, well, I mean, let's turn to, turn to our stats there because I don't have them all memorized. But all right, uh, let's go to Texas Tech first. <clears throat> we'll start with Tech. Their quarterback is balling out for sure, and it's what what Stephen here tells me. Um, what is that? 55 for 81, 804 yards. Yeah, completion is 67%. That's that's good, and he's averaging 9.9 yards a play, and that's 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 damn near a first down every play. <laughs> yeah, uh, I almost kind of worry like about. I mean, is our secondary is our secondary ready to play Texas Tech? Is our is our pass defense ready to play Texas Tech? Because we really ain't had a pass passing team to face no. yet. I mean, everyone's just tried to run it on us. Yeah, uh, and, and, and not to mention, you know, our first game, Louisiana, I mean, it's, I mean, they were ranked 23, but they were still a bullshit team. They were still a bullshit team. Even with all them seniors, they really didn't put up too much of a fight like, like we thought they were going to. No, and then Arkansas literally ran it down our throats all game. Yeah. All game. Very little passing. And then last week was just a a blowout. I mean, last week was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was great. By the way, that was yeah. that was one of the best game day experiences I've yeah. ever had. That was awesome. Man. It was fun being at the game. That we week. were there. If, if if you don't know it, uh, <clears throat> videos are down below, man. Check them out. Uh, we go to the game as much as we can, and we will drop as much information as we can, like always. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, let's go on to the next player on Tech. Uh, they're, they're a wide receiver that everybody keeps talking about. It's supposed to be like a madman. Eric, let's see if we can even get this right. <laughs> as, 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 I don't even know how. Ezukanma? Yeah, is Eric Ezukanama. Ezukanama. I'm not, I'm not good with those weird words. Even even Ogu, Ogufu, I'm, it's hard for me to yeah, say that's, that word. That's a pretty difficult, difficult but, one to look at. Yeah, no, he's... Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly he's a top draft pick. Yeah, he's out of Fort Worth too. Six three at two twenty. His receptions is sixteen for three hundred fifty yards and a touchdown, averaging twenty one point nine yards a catch. Just pretty darn good, honestly. It's a little bit better than than uh, Xavier Worthy and uh, Jordan Whittington. Yeah, but we can't. It's it's hard to it's hard to go off of that whenever. Uh, they haven't really paid, played anybody. Well, not, I mean, not even that. I was going to say that, you know, we've, over the last three weeks, we've been trying to figure out our quarterback, you know, and no offense to Hudson Card, he's going to be a great quarterback, whether it's here, Texas, or if he transfers. Absolutely. He's going to be great, but right now he's not college worthy, I don't think, passing wise. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, even in, even in this last game, whenever he came in, there's a reason why you ain't starting, buddy, and you almost threw an interception against yeah. a crap-ass team. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so what about their defensive player? How do you feel about that one? Ooh, if none of y'all out there know, man, it is no other than Brendan Schooler's brother, Colin Schooler, at 6'2", 230 pounds. And check this stat out. Bobby, I'm going to let you go ahead and check that out. Out of 21 tackles this season – 17 solo. 17, 17 by himself. solo by himself. That is outrageous. That is sick for three games. That I don't care who you are. That that man is balling out right now. This is awesome. Like I'm not trying to ride on Texas Tech right now. You know, I'm, I'm always for Texas. But we got to give the schoolers love, man. I mean, I got to meet their father. And, you know, that man was a very respectful, kind man. So much love to the schooler family. Like always, and man, and that's something else I want to put though down there at the bottom about that game. Uh, 
they they average forty points a game, which is only two more than us. But their third down completion. I'll be checking out the third down completion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty darn low. Like our defense might be able to take advantage. That could be a key factor in us winning this game. Is their third down? If we can get them in third and longs all game, all game, like we did with Rice. Yeah. You know, because I look, I I look back and watch the Rice game the last couple of days, and every third down they had was third and eight, third and ten, third and eight, yeah. third and ten. If we can keep that third and long, all oh, game, yeah. I think we'll be okay. And. Uh, our defense has to show up. Yeah. Our the back end of our defense has to show up. Our secondary has to show up. Come on, Foster, baby. Let's get this win today. I mean Saturday, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that third down completion for them is forty six point eighty eight, which is that's below fifty fifty. And look at that giant spider that just came down. Wow, he came right to the camera and barely didn't come into sight. That's pretty darn cool. I wish she would have came down to the camera. Come on, little spider. Let me hold a damn fly mm-hmm. down here and you come get it. Nope. I don't like spiders. <laughs> he said, I don't like spiders. That's a big one. Nope. I do not like it. Anyways. Yeah. So let's move on to Texas. All right. Texas yeah, stands yeah. a little. How, uh, how we got a lot more notes on Texas. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we'll start with the game day prediction. That's that fly. He comes every other video. He's like our uh, fourth I mean, host on the call. Well, I mean, not really, because flies die in a day, but okay. They die in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. They, they pass it down to another uh, yeah. co-host. Yeah. They, they keep it <laughs> Shut going. the fuck up. <laughs> Shut up. So, game day predictions, y'all. All right, we're going to start with yours. Go ahead I'm, and let them know. I'm predicting 41 to 21. And it's it's I want to say that that's exactly what it's going to be, but at the same time it could be forty two to forty one. It could be a close close game, and that's just because it's very possibly going to be a shootout. Yeah. But uh, my personal prediction is forty two to twenty one. I I I want I want to at least score double what they have. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Mine mine is uh, fifty six to thirty five. I take it as a, an early shootout and maybe a little bit struggling somewhere mid-game in the second or third quarter where it gets a little slow. Defenses start really, really holding down. And then hopefully by the fourth quarter, uh, our offense, you know, hits the, hits the gas pedal and, and we take off. And my prediction is, you know, 56-35 with us with the dub. Uh I'm going to throw Henry's on there since he isn't able to join us tonight, but I was able to talk to him just, just moments ago. Uh, his prediction will be 28-16. He thinks that both defense are going to hold up. He thinks that uh, Texas Tech is got a, a defense that, that is, is underrated and something that uh, is going to surprise everybody Saturday. And, uh, moving on to a receiver play. Uh, we got two that can do it, and we got more that can too. That just haven't had, uh, I don't know, maybe just ain't ain't got the shine yet. But uh, we got haven't to quite been at the right place at the right time. There you go. Because our receiving core is not not that bad. I mean, we really got a pretty decent receiving core. Not quite as good as our running back room, but I mean, they 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 can ball out. Xavier Worthy being a f- true freshman and has put up the numbers that he's put up already. In three games, oh, yeah. I'm excited to see him. Oh yeah, I'm excited to see him. Ten ten receptions for 163 yards. Oh. <clears throat> and then you got Jay Witt. What is that? Thirteen receptions for 152 yards. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that's that's a way to start out. I mean, you're getting somewhere. And I mean, Jordan Winnington got a hundred of them in one game, so it doesn't show a lot for the other two, but. It's still decent stats, and and uh, I think Casey Thompson is going to have his first shootout. Obviously, uh, like I said earlier, but it'll be his first shootout as a starter. So we're going to see how he does as a competing quarterback. You know, Baker Mayfield and uh, Patrick Mahomes had this scenario years ago, and they put like how many yards? Like nine hundred total passing yards on the. On the oh my! Yeah. Oh wow! Four. Yeah. 
It was the most passing yards combined in a game in history, I believe. Ever. <laughs> most, it, was, it was crazy. Most points scored, too, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Let's get to the running backs because, you know, we're getting short on time. Oh, my, oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> running backs. Bajan, that stiff arm you got there, buddy, is a deadly, deadly weapon. That thing is a blessing from God. Every time he puts his hand on Defender's helmet, he is giving them a prayer. <laughs> them, Bless this man, Lord, for he not knows who he's trying to tackle, and he sends them to the ground, and that is where they lie and stay. <laughs> 299 rushing yards in three games. I do know he, he did bust 100 yards the last game, and I believe he was a hundred yard. He was our only hundred yard rusher in our in the first Louisiana game. He didn't do so well in the in the uh, uh, Arkansas game, but nobody really did very well in the Arkansas game. Yeah. Uh, five point six average and uh, five touchdowns in three games. I'll take it. And uh, Roshan busting that seventy two yard touchdown run. Out of the wildcat, Ooh, that was yeah. pretty. That was pretty. He's got yeah, twelve. You know what I think helped him there is the fact that they were like, "Man, why is he taking the snap on the wildcat?" They're, they're, they're thinking he's probably trying to sneak a pass off because he has that quarterback ability. But nope, nope. He stayed true to his running game. He didn't hesitate for a second to even try to cock back. He didn't cock back at all. It was a straight run. The second he got that ball in his hand, he took off. I like that he's fully committed to the run game. He's fully given up on his quarterback. Uh, just That's just out of the picture, period. That's what I was saying during the offseason. He just – because I kept getting asked about uh, what should Roshan do. He should stay where he's at now because he's already – he's – what the hell? Okay, well, let's just turn that off. No, just keep it on. Just twist the ball. Yeah, it's just a little loose. Yeah. <sighs> Testing out the new studio upgrade, so just give us some, you know, some prayers on that. Them. What about Keelan? Ooh. Keelan Robinson. The speed on the... The, the dude, Alabama the, commit transfer boy. Uh. When he busted that run, I, it was, it, I mean, that, looking back two. on it on the camera... That's a 4-2. Looking back on the camera, four, you two. almost can't even see <laughs> the dude's legs moving. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a cartoon. Just hey, Michael Huff, if you're listening, you might want to pass that name down, Flash down, because, I mean, we got a whole new Flash in the team. That that boy made everyone look like they were going in slow motion. Like, yeah. He had, <laughs> Outran like, everybody. Can you, can you Ran right between three defenders. Yeah. You. are gone. Including Xavier Worthy. And Xavier Worthy's a speedster. But then again, Xavier Worthy wasn't at full speed when they got uh, at the same time. Yeah, he was trying to make blocks, too. Yeah. Yeah. We got anything else on the offensive side? Uh, 735 rushing yards. Is that within? That's within the three games, right? Obviously. No. That was. uh, Oh, yeah. So that's within the three games. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. That's what I thought. Then again, what was it? Four or five hundred of that was one game. Yeah, <laughs> this last game, four hundred sixty yeah. rushing yards. Four hundred sixty rushing yards. It was beautiful, Sick. beautiful. And all the and all four of the running backs got a touchdown too. Let's go ahead and jump on the defense real quick with Demarvi and Overshawn leading in tackles with twenty five, and Brock Amari right behind him with twenty. Linebackers doing their job this year. I feel like the D line needs to just step it up just a tad bit. I feel like the D-line did a good job against Rice, but it's Rice. Their players aren't as big and physical as Big 12 players, or even SEC players, or really even any Power 5 school players. (laughs) I mean, you know, I don't like to say it was just Rice because it's still a football game, and you still can very easily lose on any given Saturday. It's a possibility. It don't matter who you're playing. But it's just Rice. And we have to see that what we saw against Rice. We have to see that the rest of the year. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Texas, as of right now, is 39 points per game. Uh, our third down completion is 55.26, with a little bit over half percent, which we really need to see an increase on that. I'd love to see that change because that's that's not enough for me. That that's not giving our offense 
that's not showing all gas for sure. It's just not giving our offense enough opportunities on the field to, to com com complete uh, a, a form of rhythm to get down the field. And it puts our defense on the field too long, and time of possession is too valuable when you're when you're showing a completion like that on third down. And then our penalties, though, penalties compared to under Tom Herman, we've only had 13 penalties in the last three games for a total of 96 yards, which averages a total of 32 yards a game. Last week, you know, against Rice, it was, it was like, two penalties for 12 yards. Yeah. Two penalties for 12 yards. That's disciplined football. It's, I said it in the post game video, disciplined football, and that's what I like to see. Yeah. That's going to be the different. I think most between Shark and Herman right there. I think most of our penalties came from Arkansas's game. Yeah, I really do. I think at least eight of them out of those thirteen, and then two of them were this last game because we played pretty pretty sound against Louisiana. You know, we didn't blow them out. We didn't. It wasn't the best game, but it wasn't a bad game either. You know. Well, we're gonna end it on one last topic, and you already know who it is. My favorite player, DJ Foster, and you already know I'm trying to keep track of him through this season. Hopefully, he gets drafted somewhere in the NFL. If I ever had a question for him, just so y'all know, if I ever got to interview him, my number one question is: If you're getting drafted in the NFL, and you had a pick of who you would go to, what team would you choose? Because honestly, I feel like it would be the Cowboys or the Texans, but he might pull a wild card on us. Anyway. I imagine he's going to stay home. Yeah. He's got four solo tackles out of 12 tackles, eight assists, and, of course, the beautiful INT. That was, man, that was a Jordan go-getter right there, 100%. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that was that was a and definitely the highlight of the Arkansas game. That's for sure. Absolutely, and if and if y'all haven't seen it yet, go down to the link below, and you can hit up our Instagram down there, and you can actually see pictures of me and B J Foster's uncle together, him and B J Foster's uncle together, and our third co-host Henry Gatlin, and B J Foster's uncle together. We ended up being at the same motel with him. And he was a really cool dude, him. too. Absolutely was. Very Absolutely. respectful. Yeah. We talked for like a good 10 minutes when we first met him. Absolutely. We were blown away. Yeah. <laughs> blown uh, away. Hook him to all the Foster family out there. And like always, man, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. Hashtag 40 Acre Addicts. You already know what it is. And... Y'all have a good Wednesday night, and we'll see you Saturday. Welcome. Welcome.